Hello friends, welcome to a new video in interview series. So in this video, let's talk about some of the important interview questions which usually ask in many interviews related to Java Selenium topic. So let's go to the first question. The first question is, what is the difference between action and actions in Selenium? So we have this action and actions in Selenium, right? So what is the difference between these two? So action is nothing but this is an interface, which is an interface in Selenium, whereas actions is a class in Selenium Java framework. Now, what is the exact difference? So let's uh, see with an example, with an example code. So I've written a uh, sample uh, code, which is actions, action series is equal to new actions of driver. So what we are doing here, so the uh, actions is nothing but it is a class and we are creating the object of the actions class by using the keyboard new right so new actions of driver we are creating the actions object and actions class object and then we are uh, storing in the reference variable which is nothing but action series right and the return type is actions actions is nothing but class now in the next line what we are doing we are trying to mouse over an element so to do the mouse over or to do a uh, right click or to do the context click double click everything we use to create this actions class right so here uh, we are uh, writing a code for uh, move to element which is nothing but mouse over on an element right so uh, using this reference variable action series we can call the functions inside the actions class so now i am trying to call that function move to element action series dot move to element of element and what is the return type of this function? So the return type is action, which is an interface. Here I have written the reference variable name is also action, but you can give any name. So here the return type is action. And now in the next line, we have a function in the action interface, which is nothing but perform. So this perform we use to finalize or uh, to perform this actions. So by just writing the action series dot move to element element, the action will not perform. It will not get performed. I mean, the mouse over will not happen. In order to happen that action, we every time, whenever we call this actions class, we need to call the perform function also from the action interface. So whenever you get this uh, question in interview, you can say action is an interface. Actions is a class and um, you can write a piece of code move to element or any other uh, sample functions from the actions class and then you can say when we call this uh, move to element or any other method from the actions class it is actually returned the action interface object and then we are calling the perform method from the action and that is how the difference okay and now let's go to the next question the next question is what is the difference between collection and collections in java so same here collection and collections similarly collection is an interface and collections is a class collections is a utility class collection is the root level interface in the java collection framework again we can uh, see with an example example code so here i've written a uh, example code for creating the array list object we are creating new array list object of type integer and we are storing in a reference variable called list okay and in the next line i'm trying to add few numbers into that list array i'm trying to add number one also i'm trying to add number two so these are the few functions in the list uh, sorry in the array list so what is array list here array list is a class which actually implement the collection interface. So the collection interface, we have a lot of interfaces in the collection, right? Collections framework, we have list, set, queue, etc. So array list is a class which implements a list interface, which in turn implements the collection interface, right? So array list is an example which implements directly or indirectly implement, uh, implements this collection interface. So we have the few methods in the collection interface. What are these methods? Add, uh, add, remove, and we have add methods like size and then clear all these are a few methods in the collection interface and now go to collections so what is collections collections is a utility class in java and which has static methods so static method we can call using the class name right so collections has a few methods like min max etc there is an array list having number one two three and you are trying to find the max of that list so then you can call max function from the collections in uh, collections class so here is an example system dot out dot print ln of collections dot mean of list this is to find the minimum and also uh, just similarly system dot out dot print ln of collections dot max 
right so you can explain these things what is collection and what is collections and you can write a piece of code to explain what is actually collection interface and what is actually collections next question is can we create object of abstract class so can we create this is a mostly common asked interview question okay so what is your answer can we create no we cannot create but there is something like you know we can create reference variable of the abstract class and the reference variable will point to the object of the child class so this abstract class will be implemented in the child class right so you can create the object of the child class and hence you can create a reference variable of this abstract class now next question is what happens if the exception is drawn from the finally block so we know what is finally block finally block is usually written after try catch block right after try catch block so whatever is written in the finally block it will get executed after this try catch block but what if uh, the exception is drawn from the finally block as well so what will happen so there are two things first of all if the exception is drawn then the rest of the lines won't be executed and the next one let's say if there is any uh, try catch block outside or is there or some is there any finally block outside that uh, try catch finally block okay then it will catch that exception next question is when will finally block won't execute so we just discussed that finally block it always execute after the try catch block right but there are some cases the finally block won't, will not get executed so what is this case so uh, you can say when jvm stops like uh, due to sudden sudden behavior if jvm stops in between then the finally block won't execute also when you try to call system dot exit function so system is a class in java right if you are trying to call the exit function from the system class then also finally block won't get executed coming to next question what is the return type of find element and find elements if there is no matching element found so we know uh, find element method is used to find the first element in a web page first matching web element right and if we have more than one matching web element then we will go with the find elements right and find element usually will return web element as the return type find elements usually will return list web element as a return type but here the question is in case if there is no matching element for both find element and find elements then what would be the return type so for find element we used to get no such element exception right if there is no matching element we will get no such element exception if you are trying to use find element but if you are trying to use find elements then it will return an empty list it won't throw any exception it will not give any error instead it will just give a return empty list so the size will be zero coming to next question difference between throw and throws in java so we have two keywords throw and throws in java right so what are the uh, difference between these two throw keyword is to use to throw the exception explicitly inside the function so let's say when you write a function you can uh, you know you want to manually in case if you're asserting something okay you're creating some uh, data on your uh, site and you, you are checking whether the data is created or not so if the data is not created you want to throw the exception explicitly then you can use that keyword throw this exception right so in that way at the end of the function you can write that line of code but what is throws so throws is also to declare the exception but it is returned in the method signature along with the method signature like uh, we will we'll be writing the method public void calculate the sum of two numbers and after that you will be putting throws and then the exception right, name right so we are expecting that that method may return some uh, exception from the code whatever is written in the code it can have some chances of throwing the exception so in that case we will be writing throws keyword so instead of this try catch block we will be writing the throws keyword right so exception might be thrown during the script execution now coming to next question what are the rules of method overriding in java so what are the rules of method overriding in java i have not provided in this ppt but uh, let's discuss 
so first of all uh, what is the main condition in order to write in order to achieve the method of writing there should be an easy relationship right so what is easy relationship there should be method inheritance concept right so there is a method inheritance concept uh, in java oops concept when we are uh, uh, inheriting uh, the child, parent, parent class in the child class and we are overriding one particular method which is nothing but we will call it as method overriding but there are some restrictions so there are some rules when we do the method overriding so first one is there should be an easy relationship the next rule is both method should have the same signature for example it should have same name right so the method name should be same and next one is overriding method should have same return type so whatever method you are uh, returning the parent class it, it will have some return type right so the same return type you should follow while overriding that method and then again uh, another rule is uh, the access modifier of the subclass should be greater than or equal to the access modifier of the parent class so what are the different access modifiers in java public protected default and private right so the access modifier of the subclass should be greater than or equal to the access modifier of the parent class for example uh, you are using a uh, public as the access modifier of the method of parent class then you can only use public as the uh, access modifier of the child class right there is no access modifier which is greater than a uh, public i mean which is, it will pro which will provide the access greater than a uh, public keyword right uh, let's say if you are uh, using some other things like uh, public protected okay protected then you can use either public or protected in the child class so these are um, few, few things you need to consider and we know that final methods we cannot override and also static methods we cannot override right now next go to next question what happens if we override static method in java so we just know we just uh, mentioned that we cannot override the static methods what what happens if we override the static method in java will it throw any error or will there be any compilation issue so there won't be any compilation error there won't be any error during runtime also but what happens if we are uh, trying to override a static method so let's see with an example so I've created a class called parent class and I've written a method called method one, public static void method, which is a static method. And I'm trying to print out one statement, uh, parent class method is called, okay. And we will create one more class, child class, which is extending the parent class. And we, which will have the same method, which has the same method, public static void method one, which, which is also static method. So we are doing the method overriding here, right? And we are uh, trying to print out one other statement, child class method is called. Now let's create the object of the child class in the next line. We are creating the object of the child class using the new keyword, new child. And we are storing to the parent reference variable, parent p is equal to new child. And now using this uh, reference variable, we are trying to call the method, method one. So what would be the output? What do you think like which method will be called whether the method from the parent class or the method from the child class. So what usually happens? So here it is static method. Uh, okay, let's leave that. If that if it is not the static method, usually in method overriding, what will happen if you are creating the object of the child class and if you are uh, calling the overriding uh, method, then we will get the overridden implementation, right? Overridden method, the method in the child class. But here we will get the uh, output as parent class method is called, which is the method of parent class so actually we are hiding the method in the child class so this is nothing but we can also call it as method hiding so we answers two question here so if you are asked interview question like uh, what happens if we override the static method in java you can say this is what happens uh, method hiding will happen also the um, if you are asked what is method hiding you can explain the same answer okay with an example let's go to next question can we give negative priority in test ng? So we have this test ng framework. We know we can give priorities also in the test ng framework by giving the priorities equal to zero, priority equal to one and all, right? So the question is, can we give negative priority in test ng? Yes, negative priorities are acceptable, but it is not actually recommended. Uh, the recommended priority starts from 0 to positive numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. But negative priorities are also considered, I mean, also acceptable, but it is not actually recommended. Now, coming to next question, what is the return type of get window handles in Selenium and why? 
So we know when we try to handle more than one uh, browser tabs, so let's say we opened more than one tab in your uh, browser. So we used to get all the window handles using this method, get window handles, right? Driver dot get window handles. So what would be the return type when you use get window handles and why? That is a question. So we know the driver dot get window handles, it will return the return type of set. So it will return type of set of string, okay? So the return type is set of string, but why we are storing in a set only? Uh, why not list? right so we can we know that it is a list of strings or list of get uh, handles so why can't we store it in a list why only in sets that is the next part uh, of the question why so we store it in set because of a uh, few features of set so we know set won't allow any duplicate so in case if you have opened uh, the same window uh, multiple times it will not store uh, all the window handles it will just pick only one uh, window handle right i mean the unique element it will store only the unique elements also we know that uh, set, set does not uh, mind the order like uh, the order of uh, insertion uh, it, it, it it won't consider the order of insertion like whatever the order in whatever the order we have opened the uh, chrome browser windows i mean the window tabs so we don't care about the order when we take the window handles right so in that case also we can go with set but list always will consider the order and the next question what is the difference between before dash and before method annotation in test ng so this question i will leave it to you guys i want you guys to answer in the comment section what is exactly the difference between before test and before method okay and also we can uh, discuss this question answer in our next video okay then then let's wind up we will see with some other interesting questions in our next video thanks for watching bye thank you